obviously we all have seen over the pic the the pictures and the reporting coming out over this weekend of what's been going on in Israel and really unfortunately this is yet another chapter in the saga of this Palestinian Israeli conflict and this is yet a conflict that we will always stress that neither side here is really in the right but both have points where they are entirely valid when Hamas talks about the uh the mistreatment the the, the mishandling the the oppression that, that the Palestinians are suffering they are right but they immediately lose that when they go and do this assault uh, you know killing innocent people and civilians you know in the streets they lose any moral high ground or any arguments that they might have had on that stuff. Equally, the same goes for Israel. It can't just say, oh, yes, um, mistreatment and, and, and all this, we're not doing this when there's video evidence, etc., showing all this going on all the time, and then go, okay, now we're just going to you know, strike back at Hamas and knowing full well that this is going to lead to a ton of civilian casualties and people who were not involved in this attack in, in any way whatsoever. Uh, what has happened here really is that there has been an attempt at a ongoing peace process. Uh, what has gone on here is, I believe, Hamas has done this to try and get itself imposed on the wider ongoing Middle East diplomacy that has been going on in the background for some time. They are trying to get attention saying, hey, we are here. We are not going to be ignored. This is what we want to do. So before we go talking more into uh, about some Middle East politics, uh, please do remember to click on that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one of the ocean link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. There is, of course, the YouTube thank you link. And of course, there is the Pony Club as well. So Middle East politics, especially when it comes to the whole, um, you know, Israeli-Palestine conflict is in incredibly complex, incredibly complicated. So I am by no means an expert, and I fully expect um, people in the comments to say, you got this wrong, or you didn't mention this, or anything like that. I know, I fully understand that. Like I said, this is why I'm acknowledging this is incredibly complex. But to understand why Hamas has launched this surprise attack and why, as I said, I believe this is part of its um, mission of this objective is to impose itself on some of the ongoing diplomacy uh, that is, has been going on in the Middle East for quite some time, or at least for at least the past couple of years. So what's been going on? Well, America, for quite some time, has really changed its stance on the Israeli-Palestine conflict. What it has said is that we can, uh, well, we've reached the limit of how much influence we can really exert on either side. And if there is to be any lasting peace, other countries in that region will have to get involved as well to ensure that there is a lasting peace. And as a result, you have seen a almost normalization of relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia have been big backers of uh, the Palestinian cause uh, since the beginning. And this has led to Hamas feeling increasingly isolated as a political force, as, well, the Palestinian Authority, led by a guy called, let me get his name right now. Uh, where is his name? Um, so the guy who uh, is in charge of the Palestinian Authority is called President uh, Mohammed Abbas. Um, so Abbas and has been really sort of focusing on diplomacy between him and Saudi Arabia and, and Israel, especially cozying up to even people of the likes of uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad over in Syria. We've even seen them reach out diplomatically to Iran as well. And there has been this ongoing sort of 
diplomatic talks, and we don't know exactly what's been going on, what's been going on be- between these these channels, but whatever has been going on, Hamas hasn't been pleased about this. And one of the big problems when it comes to the Palestinian-Israeli peace process is that there are two big spoilers that are always going to be in the room. The first of all is you have the right-wing Israeli government that is constantly uh, you know, really against sort of the peace process, saying that they cannot uh, negotiate with terrorists, that they will not get involved in, in any way, shape, or form. And ultimately, what this attack by Hamas has done, that will only add fuel to their fire, to reasons not to engage in this wider peace process. They may even pull out of talks. The uh, the the normalization that we have seen of the relations between Israel and, and Saudi Arabia may become soured because of this. Essentially, this is why this attack, I think, was carried out in the way that it was, that Hamas wanted to do something to impose itself on Middle East diplomacy and say, we are not going to be ignored, we are not going to be sidelined, we are demanding that we want to be included in these talks as well. And the problem is, whatever these talks you get going on, this becomes the big spoiler in the room, because the Israeli right-wing government has said multiple times it will not do any deals, it will not talk with Hamas, it will not deal with them in any way, shape, or form. So the second they get bring, or, or at least brought into the room, out goes any people from the Israeli government, because they refuse to talk with them. This becomes the big spoiler in the room. And equally, of course, Hamas doing stuff like this proves to be its own spoiler in the room. So this is the mess that has gone on at the moment, that there were um, something back channels going on between the uh, countries in the Middle East, as, as we said, between Saudi Arabia, uh, Israel, um, Syria, and potentially even Iran, do it looking at doing something. We don't know exactly what that could have been. Maybe it could have been uh, sort of pushing uh, more and more towards the sort of the, the peace process, getting more involved in it. Maybe that's all going to go up in the air now because of what Hamas has done. But this was essentially Hamas saying, we want to be involved uh, in what's going on, and we are going to impose ourselves on this in a quite drastic way to say, hey, look, you've got to deal with us. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, this, I think, has possibly derailed, once again, any chance of, of, of something good going on. We'll have to see what comes of this, but all this was because people were talking, and Hamas wasn't included, and so on. They will make the case that, oh, this is all being to do with stuff that's been going on with the Al-Aqsa Mosque recently. Um, I, I I don't believe that. I think that's mainly been a cover. I think it has been because of um, these diplomatic talks that have been going on between these countries. I think that's the reason why that this has gone on. Um, but they've successfully possibly potentially ruined any of those because, well, the Israeli right wing in the government is going to go, well, see, this is why we shouldn't get involved in these types of talks. Um, and once again, the Israeli peace process uh, between them and the Palestinians is just gets even more confusing and complex. Uh, like I say, even for someone like me, when you, when you look at it, it is incredibly complex. And this attack is yet another chapter in this long, long saga of this um like i say we'll see what happens but unfortunately uh, i don't think anything good's going to come from it but as always uh thank you very much of course for watching and of course as always we'll see you all next time